Our struggle veterans are mourning the loss of one of their own. We'll talk about the legacy of Winnie Madikizela Mandela and who she was. And we're joined by the MK Council's Mavusom Simang. Dadim Simang, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you very much for inviting us. We look at that tribute that our team has put together and it's almost impossible not to become, um, not to feel some kind of emotion listening to Mamwini Madikizela Mandela speak. What was going through your mind as you, as you're listening to some of those quotes in her own words of her experiences and especially what, her, what she had to say about the TRC? Extremely moving, I must say, the music, but also just watching her feistiness, her determination, to do what she believed was right and not to surrender and not to forgive, you know. Um, she was that kind of person who did what she believed was correct and um, a really impressive person. There seems to be a lot of contestation about her legacy, what it is. For some, there is no question. For others, um, the it's a much more nuanced, perhaps even complex picture that, that, that is painted. Do you think that how we approach the way in which we try to make sense of, of her life and almost want to put her within borders uh, limits our understanding of who she was as an individual? Yes, I think we should let her be and not try to confine her in borders or define her in terms of what we wish her to have been. But what's beyond dispute is that she made tremendous sacrifices for the liberation of this country, a lot more than many other people who could have done that if they were in her position. She, you must remember that she married um, Nelson Mandela, I think, uh, 1958. And two years later, this man is gone, um, underground, traveling in Africa. When the apartheid government had decided to ban the ANC, the leadership of the ANC decided that they were not going to define its future for them, for it. And so other ways, violence was added as a, an element of the struggle. And so you had Nelson Mandela really disappearing from the family. Then he is caught and he's imprisoned and much later he is sent to life imprisonment. And this woman continues the fight that the ANC and her husband and the leadership of the time had decided to be done. She does this alone. It was terrible for them to be in prison powerless to do anything, but it was more challenging for her, confronted by very brutal, very brutal set of people who humiliated her, uh, who, who gave her all sorts of tests that you can imagine. Um, and, and when she emerges from all of this and emerges unwavering in her beliefs, she then continues to live and in time, I think like many human beings would, you know, after I read about what she did, after going through Brant Brantford, um, sitting there for, in solitary confinement for all the time, she's not bowed and she comes out of that. And what human being would not bend to certain things that she couldn't control? I don't think we should condone anything at all that she did, but we should not be too quick to judge. I just don't know how I would have stood up to that, whether I would even have been able to survive five years of that kind of torture. She emerges still committed and still defiant and still regarded by many people come 1976 and the kids who are being scattered around decide there is where our asylum, our refuge is, and they go to her house. She is regarded for good reason as the model, as the protector. I think I have a lot, lot of respect. I wish more people who know about these other not nice things that she did, and she did them, 
could concentrate, could put herself, themselves in her shoes and, and, and know that she was driven by a commitment to struggle. You know, you speak about the, the, the respect and her, commit, and her commitment, and I think, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela reflects on, on, on that as well in, in letters, exchanges between the two of them, saying that he, 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 he almost gains a profound respect for her commitment and the extent to which she's willing to, to endure, you know, the, through the years of unemployment, having to provide for the family without a stable income. And as you speak about those gruesome years, it, it, in prison and the, the states and what, what exactly she was subjected to. But you fast forward to 2018 and she remains a woman who was still committed to the ANC and again remained a credible voice within the organization. We had Julius Malema today saying that she's the only person who could have him on the one side in one hand and have a Cyril Ramaphosa on the other hand. Speak to us about her role then in the organization more broadly beyond just what, what, you know, what she's been celebrated for during her years in the struggle. I got to know Winnie rather late. But I was in, in very, very honored when she invited me to her house in Orlando some three, four years ago. And I got to know her and the family. I tell you, in the run up to the elections, in Nasrec, the conference of the ANC, I don't know who of the contestants didn't go to Winnie for advice, to seek some kind of support. I know Malema went there, Cyril went there, I, th um, I know also Lindy Wesisulu. So she was really regarded as the beacon of uh, the struggle. She, she had been there, she was defiant. I think there comes a time when you must, she, she, she was a fighter and, 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 and unyielding in her beliefs. She didn't state them in the most diplomatic of ways. And was it, was it uncomfortable for the ANC, given the extent of patriarchy that still ex exists within the organization, to have a figure like Mamuni Madigizela Mandela be a woman, but still be as credible, as revered, and be the one to say uncomfortable things? And quite frankly, she's saying all of those things to a lot of men. No, absolutely. I, 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 I can't defend patriarchy at all because it exists. But when a strong personality, woman, whoever, emerges, she commands the kind of respect that anybody who listens to her actually accepts that. I doubt if anybody would have said, I'm not going to go to her because she's a woman. She actually earned her place in the leadership. At a time when many men were not stepping forward and facing the Boers were really very vicious. She was out there, so she earned this thing. By the way, in history, we must also know that we had women. Uh, Lillian Goy is said to have famously said, these men are busy drinking and so on. Let them, let's, let's, let's get their trousers. We, 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 we are the men here. And, and I think a person who uh, has authority, has, that authority is recognized. Um, um, th there is no doubt at all that they wouldn't have respected a man a lot more than they would have Winnie. And she was never uncomfortable about the fact of being a woman talking to men. What, what, what is the loss that you experienced then as the counsel for the Veterans Association, given the important role you've played in the ANC, especially recently in terms of its decline and what the organization can do to renew itself? We, by the way, met Winnie, not as a whole group, but we discussed the position that had been taken by the council and by the veterans. And she was very, very supportive of that effort because, I mean, she couldn't, like many others of her generation, uh, accept the trajectory that the ANC uh, was taking. But <clears throat> what I, I found particularly impressive was her, was her quiet but determined authority when you spoke to her, very polite, almost shy sometimes to a T, but you did not miss the fact that this person knew what they were about. 
with all the things that happened, which I don't like to talk too much about, but which I don't deny, they emerged the winning who would have been as good as anything had she not been subjected to the kind of torture that uh, our oppressors did. Tonight, your final reflections on her life and on her legacy? She has left a legacy that will not be rivaled easily by anybody uh, in post-1994 um, South Africa. I don't think there are very many legacies before 1994 that one can look up to. She had the difficult moments, but you know what I will remember. In fact, the more I read about the difficult things that she did, the more I understand why her determination, her willingness to take any level of, um, of suffering led her eventually to cave in at certain moments and, and, and do some of the things that have been uh, attributed to her. Well, certainly, if I hear you correctly, it's, it's a really an urge to um, walk a mile in, in her shoes, if we could, if that's even possible, to perhaps understand her life a bit differently. You have a much better turn of phrase. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming Thank into you. studio tonight. Ndadi Mabuso Msima.